Hi, I am Dr. Arsalan Khan and today we are going to explain the general characteristics and examples of phylum Salentrata. Examples of the phylum are Hydra, Obelia, Jellyfish, Sea anemone, Corals and Physalia. The word Salentrata is from Greek language. The Salentrata is derived from two words, Colio and Entrata. Colio means hollow and Entrata means intestine. So these animals bear hollow intestines or gastrovascular cavity. While the second word means nettle sting. Nettle sting means annoying stings, so these have poisonous stinging capacity. Animals have poisonous stings for their protection and area means connected with, so these are connected with the poisonous or annoying stings. Nettle means annoying. The next character is aquatics. These are all aquatic and exclusively marine. So phylum Salentrata they are all marine. These are diploblastic and the body is composed of two layers, the ectoderm and endoderm. The outer layer is called ectoderm, inner layer is called endoderm. These are radially symmetrical and can be divided into two or more compartments, equal halves, by the apparent or imaginary line. These are all multicellular animals and belong to the class Metazoa. Next character is Nematocysts. Nematocysts are the organs of offense and defense. In case of the serenitrates, the mouth bear the tentacles. These are the tentacles arising are projecting from the mouth and these tentacles have cells called nematocysts and these nematocysts are called stinging cells or these are organs of offense and defense for production of these animals. In case of salentrates, mouth is present, anus is absent. Next is intron. This is the hollow cavity. This is called intron or gastrovascular cavity. Gastrovascular cavity. And this is the only cavity present in these salentrates. So this is the psyllium or body cavity in the salentrate which is also referred to as gastrovascular cavity or intron because digestion of food occurs here. Next is the mesoglia. So that the animals bear two layers. The outer layer is called ectoderm. The inner layer is called endoderm. And the ectoderm is for protection of the animal. For example, the tentacles are arising from this ectoderm while the endoderm, it helps in the digestion of food. And in between these two layers is a region which is non-cellular or we can say which is non-living material and it is called as mesoglia. So this is basically the layer or the material present between the two layers the ectoderm and endoderm which is non-cellular and non-living is termed as mesoglia because it is present in the middle layer. Next character is the feeding zoids. In some cases for example we can say the obelia The obelia live in colonial farm and certain animals are obelia. These help in the nutrition for the whole colony, for the entire colony these are responsible to provide the nutrition and these are also called as the feeding zoids. Next is the carnivorous. They basically these eat animals, the larvae of fish, insects and zooplanktons and crustaceans. So these are basically the food materials or the food ingredients eaten by the salentrates. So these are all carnivorous animals. Next is the locomotion. As far as locomotion is concerned, so, so there are two types of animals are based of locomotion in salentrates. These are immotile or sessile and others are motile. We can say that the obelia and corals, these are sessile animals and, and these are usually attached to the rocks in the sea while the jellyfish Hydra and Physalia, these are all motile due to presence of specialized locomotory organs. Next is respiration and excretion. The serentrates lack respiratory and excretory system and respiration and excretion occurs through general body surface by the process of diffusion. So again these animals are deficient in expiratory and excretory organs. Now I will consider the important animals from the serentrates. First one is Physalia pelagica. It is also referred to as Portuguese man of war because shape of the physalia is matching with the Portuguese man of war and it can move at the rate of 12.1 cm per second in the water. Next is the jellyfish. Some of the jellyfish are also poisonous having stings. So some of the jellyfish, these are poisonous and bear major threat and health hazard to the divers and swimmer in the aquatic environment. So jellyfish are considered as dangerous animals. Jellyfish can move. It is the fastest silent rate. And it moves by jet propulsion method. Jet propulsion method. What is jet propulsion method? In case of jet propulsion method, the water is ejected from the mouth of the jellyfish and the jellyfish moves in the backward direction 
against the flux of water in the form of jet for example in case of jet it is ejecting its fuels and gases and it moves in the opposite direction to the ejection similarly in case of jellyfish it ejects the water from its mouth and it moves in the backward direction in the reverse direction so this is called jet propulsion method next are the corals corals are very much important because these protect the sea shores from the tidal waves from the erosion because tidal waves may erode the seashores and damage the surface of the seashore so these corals these cover the seashores and protect it from the tidal waves and erosion these were important examples of the centrates next is the reproduction centrates there are two modes of reproduction the asexual and sexual asexual mode of reproduction involves the budding fragmentation and regeneration while well, sexual reproduction involves the fusion of sperm and ova. So both kinds of reproduction takes place in the centrates. Next is the polymorphism. Polymorphism is derived from three words. Poly means many, morph means form and ism means phenomena. So this is the phenomena in which an individual can exist in two or more forms. For example, in centrates, the centrates exist in two forms. The first is called polyp, the second form is called medusa. Polyp is tubular shape. For example, you can see in this diagram that the animal is tube-like or spherical or cylindrical shape. So this is called polyp, while medusa is umbrella-like. Polyp is the form which is nutritive in nature, while medusa is reproductive in nature. And the individual which is occurring in polyp or medusa form, this individual is called zoid. So the polyp zoid are nutritive, while the medusa zoid are reproductive in nature. Next is the metagenesis. Metagenesis is also called as alternation of generation. In case of certain traits, traits the reproductive organs reverses. For example, the polyps derive the medusa and medusa again change into the polyp. So there is alternation of generation between the polyp and medusa zoids which alternate or which interchange from one form to other form. So this is the alternation of generation are also called as metagenesis. Next is the use of certain trait as decorative material. For example, corals. These can be used in the aquarium of fish, at our homes or offices, in the garden rocks and even can be used in the jewelry. So corals are beautiful and decorative in nature. Next is reproduction mode. So these are usually hermaphrodite. The animals belonging to the phylum centrata are usually hermaphrodite. Heavy and female reproductive organs are present in the same animal and this, is, and this animal is also called as monoecious. Monoecious, the animals in which both sex organs are present, these are also called as hermaphrodite. The fertilization is usually external. The nervous system is poorly developed in the form of nerve net. The centrates are also called as hydrozones. Hydrozones means hydro means water and zoa means animals. So these are the animals which live in water. It should be kept in mind that we have discussed the two forms of the centrates, the polyps and medusa. The polyp is dominant one while the medusa is reduced. So this is also an important point that the polyp generation or the polyp zoids are dominant. These are large in size while the medusa are reduced are small in size. So this was all about the phylum centrata. Thank you.